Okay, let's continue the business. Um, I know semua orang, of course, pernah belajar photosynthesis kalau tak buka sekolah Malaysia. Sebab itu ada dalam syllabus. Right. The, 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 the thing is, um, photosynthesis, it's not the only process yang tumbuhan boleh lakukan. Okay, so there are various biochemical processes in plants and photosynthesis happens to the one that utilizing carbon dioxide as its substrate. Right, and it might surprise you, plants not the only one as well that can perform photosynthesis. There are algae, there are cyanobacteria that, that are capable to do photosynthesis, but not as efficient as plants. Okay, so <clears throat> if, you, if you remember your biology from, from your school time, there are these two organelles, the one that you always find in both animal and plant cell, the mitochondria. So mitochondria, the function is to break down the glucose and you will get the carbon dioxide. So it is a CO2 releaser. Then you have your chloroplast, another organelle that utilizes using up CO2 and it will give out sugar. The sugar will come to the mitochondria and the cycle will continue to repeat itself. And it might surprise you as, uh, if you are not familiar with uh, genomic genetics. Each mitochondria and chloroplast has its own set of DNA. Okay. Before this, you learn that um, DNA only present in nucleus. Actually, th there are other two places. Uh, we have the chloroplastic uh, DNA and also the mitochondrial DNA. Right. <clears throat> Before I go into that crazy bit of the uh, biochemical pathway, I think it's a good practice to appreciate Photosynthesis, it's not only biochemical process, it's actually biophysical process. Because the plants have evolved in such a way to enable the leaf to accept CO2 and also to transport all the products of photosynthesis. And this is the uh, regular leaf here. And when you do the cross-section, this is the common depiction of a leaf. You're going to get the upper part of the leaf and the lower part of the leaf. And then you're going to get this blue tube here or the vascular bundles, equivalent to human's veins. And we have also here the cells dotted with chloroplasts. You're going to see they are actually grains. So these cells, those that do photosynthesis, are called mesophyll cells from the Greek word meso means middle, phil means leaf, in the middle of the leaf. Right. So this when you further zoom in just at the stomatal region here, you can see that the CO2 is having quite a journey before it can reach us all the way into the chloroplastic region, okay? And this is not an easy journey because if you zoom in at the surface of the plant, you can see that this is the stomata and that this is the surface of the plant. Can you see here, it says uh, the boundary layer. That actually the problem. Yeah, boundary layer is um, a film of still air that prevent gas exchange between the plant and also the environment, All right? So for the CO2 from the atmosphere to reach the chloroplast and for the photosynthesis to take place, it's quite a journey, All right? So we're going to have a look uh, a bit more in, in a bit, yeah. So let's talk about the chloroplast. So we have a regular depiction of a plant cells. 
various organelles. You've got your nucleus, you've got your um, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, both rough and smooth, right? And let's focus on this guy, the green guy. What is it? So in essence, you need to understand that in chloroplast is having double membrane. And in the chloroplast itself, there are two compartmentalization is happening. Number one is in the pancake region, or we call it in the granum. So this one pancake, we call it thylakoid membrane, this one pancake here. A full stack of pancakes, we call it granum, and the plural of that is grana. So that is the first region. And the second region is the vicinity, the soup inside the chloroplast itself. That is called stroma here. And this is important because for photosynthesis to complete, these two locations involved very tightly. Right. <clears throat> can, you, can you see the bridge here? It's labeled lamella. This, this is actually to, to, to tell you, this pancake is actually an illusion. It's actually not a single pancake. It's actually a long tube that has been folded and pressed upon another to give the illusion of pancake. Pretty much like your intestine. You see, if you, if you, if you cut open, not now, you're going to see that your intestine kind of stacking one upon another, right? Yeah. Same thing happened here. This is actually one long tube. Right, so and this is the closer look of it. So you have your light reactions and also light independent reaction of photosynthesis is happening. Um, so the good thing about photosynthesis is you can learn it reaction by reaction. You got the photosynthesis. This is actually two uh, separate reactions. Okay, photo reaction. This is happening in the thylakoid membrane or the pancake region. The synthesis or the light independent reaction. Synthesis of what? Synthesis of sugar is happening in the stroma or in the soup region. But both of them still within the chloroplast. So can you imagine the intricacy of God's creation? Chloroplast is very small and yet very busy, teeming with biochemical activity. Right. Light dependent reaction and also the light uh, independent reaction or the Kelvin cycle. I know that some book called dark, dark, dark reaction, dark cycle. Please don't call that. That's actually very misleading and incorrect. Okay, It's not happening in the dark. It's actually do not require light directly. Even that is wrong as well. You still need light to activate uh, enzymes in the Kelvin cycle to happen. Right. Okay. So let's see the, um, the ingredient, the nature of the ingredient. You know, see photosynthesis, uh, the biochemical reaction, A plus B, you got C. Uh, we want to understand the substrate, the ingredient needed to run the photosynthesis. Number one is like, this is actually the repeat from the slide before. Um, I think we can pretty much um, uh, skip this. Uh, what I want to highlight is that light has to be in the light, in the right quantity and quality for the photosynthesis to happen. If the light is bright, but you give UV, the plant's not going to be very happy about it. If the light is bright, but you give infrared, you're going to burn the leaf, right? So quality and quantity of the light has to be correct for each species. Each species has its own requirement. The citrus plant has its own uh, light requirement. The vegetable has its own light requirement, yeah. Only when you want to deal with flowering, then only the light duration of photo period comes in, in, into play. Right. And then the other components, 
needed for the photosynthesis to happen is the pigments. Okay, these actually to receive the light. The light now, right quality, right quantity is going to come into the cell and the cells, especially this thylakoid membrane, this thylakoid membrane here is filled with various plant pigments. Not only chlorophyll, but other pigments as well. You know pigment? Pig Do you have pigments? What's your pigment? What color is your pigment? Brown. <laughs> Brown. Latte. Uh, your skin got pigment. Your hair got pigment. But that Why? Kenapa tiba-tiba dia macam tu? <coughs> Sekejap ya. Eh. Kenapa dia tiba-tiba menjerit? Selalu when you when you are screaming, tak dapat perhatian. I'll just 10, 4, 6, 2 Okay, okay Ah, Jangan nangis, jangan nangis <coughs> Okay Apa tak cakap ini cakap <laughs> Oh pigments, rambut uh, your, 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 your hair got the pigments melanin right? So that's why some people got the blonde, got the brown, got the black. So about even melanin got a different subset. You've got the heteromelanin and eumelanins. Okay, that gives you a different color. What about if my what, uh, my my auntie's color is blue? Uh, that means uncle's very rich. So the melanin turn blue. Right. Okay. Pigments is simple. The color is due to the light absorbed, but in differential amount. You see, the light that comes toward the pigments in all rainbow color, but the pigments, depending on the type, it has uh, molecular bounds. It has spe special uh, chemistry to it. It will only absorb certain amount of energy while reflecting or transmitting the rest of it. For example, the chlorophyll. You see the chlorophyll? Chlorophyll, let's see. Can I, can I draw this? Tak ingat lah. The porphyry ring of chlorophyll. Ah, macam, macam tu lah. You have Mg. And then you have the, the phytotail. So, this is the CHO. Double bond. Um, when light comes to this chlorophyll molecule with the porphyrin ring and the phytotail, hydrocarbon tail, green is not going to be absorbed by the molecule um, combination that is happening there. Green will be reflected. All right? What colors are mainly absorbed in here? Two colors, red and blue. So this is why scientists, they use this knowledge to turn LED color in the plant factory only just to red and blue because it has been proven. Green is not, it's not, it's not entirely used uh, by the plant. Right. What about other pigments? So other pigments are present in plants like the carotenes, anthocyanins, and all these colors, in, if you consume them, they're going to do some health wonders to your body. In plants, there are actually the sunblock. You see all the plants, right? Any plants wearing umbrella? Any plants wearing Nivea SPF Gratus? Kan? It's not, it's, it's, it's not like the pokok duku next door can run to Watson to buy Nivea, right? So how the plants protect itself from all this burning, scorching sunlight, UV light, these pigments. We call it a photoprotective mechanism, right? So the, the, the thing about photosynthesis is 
only one chlorophyll molecule type is responsible for the photosynthesis. It's called a, a special chlorophyll A molecule. There are two types, P680 and P600. We will, you'll see that later, don't worry about it. These two things are actually involved in the photochemistry. Other pigments, there are the sunblock and also to filter the light. Because the plants, the plants cannot decide, oh, I just want 700 this morning. I just want uh, 400 um, in, 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 in the late afternoon. So all of these pigments dissipate excess um, energy. And also it, it makes the plant look prettier. So the next time, when you look at the green leaf, don't be too sure it's green. That's actually illusion. Too bad Malaysia do not have winter sonata. Otherwise, during the autumn, what color do you see the leaf? Yellow, orange, red, right? Tapi during summertime, it was green. During summer, during summer, during we, uh, autumn, fall time, the photo period is going to shorten and the temperature is going to drop. This is causing the chlorophyll to break down. When chlorophyll break down, the, the green color is now unmasked. Other colors now are present. So look at the leaf. Green is not the only color there. It's just chlorophyll are suppressing other people from shine. Yeah, it's, it's like your, your overachiever sibling, right? Uh, jadilah macam tu, jadilah macam tu, macam uh, aku? <laughs> uh, you want to shine, wait for the autumn to come. Yes. Right. So, uh, does, it, does it mean other pigments are not there? It's there, it's there. If you want to read more about this later, um, uh, you can use this technique. Le uh, paper chromatography. Paper chromatography. <laughs> Dia tak suka, dia tak suka saya duduk situ ke? Okay, alright. So let's look at here. This is the first part of the photosynthesis, the light reaction. Okay, now this is the chloroplast. We zoom in now. We zoom in at the one of the thylakoid membrane. And this is thylakoid membrane. The grey here is the stroma the soup inside the chloroplast and the inside here is the inside of the thylakoid space we call it lumen or lubang lumen right and the light reactions happening very vibrantly aggressively here in the membrane so what's actually present in the membrane so in essence proteins there are various proteins in the membrane. Why do you think people uh, give urea a lot to the fertilizer? Yes, nitrogen. Nitrogen is, is, is the constituent needed to make lots of protein. And this is why you need protein as well. But how do you get your protein? Chicken, eggs, right? Can it be good? Uh, beans, tofu, and makati. <laughs> right. Okay. So, in this membrane, there are something we call as photosystem. System cahaya that are present. We got photosystem 2 on the left and photosystem 1 on the right. Okay. It actually starts from photosystem 2 first the story so the long story short is when the light comes in on the and heating the surface of the thylakoid membrane this light energy will be absorbed by all the pigments that are present chlorophyll a chlorophyll b anthocyanin beta carotene xanthophyll and so on until one value is achieved which is 680 here so the concept here is something like this oops you can see here right <clears throat> the moment plant come here 
can see that this is the island of your pigments on the thylakoid membrane. Remember, okay, being aware of the location as I'm saying it is very important uh, for the understanding. So when the light comes, let's say that the light comes 400. 400 nanometer, which is blue, that cannot activate this special chlorophyll A molecule to do photochemistry. 680 actually referring to the activation energy, 600 nanometer. Only 680 nanometer can activate this chlorophyll to eject its electron and to run the whole of photochemistry. So 400 nanometer, that's not right. So it will start to transfer to the next pigment. And as the transfer takes place, the energy going to decrease. It becomes, remember, decrease energy, longer wavelength. Now it becomes 2425. Transfer again, now becomes 500. Transfer again, 550. 550. Transfer again, 600. Transfer again, 650. And then transfer again, you got 680. Electron become excited. And then you can start the photosynthesis. So all of this is actually the transfer in the form of vibration. Right? You can think of the, the pigments, all the colors, they are vibrating. Like, do you know tuning fork? You learn at school? The uh, Tuning fork, it looks like this. This is like, like an evil cane. Um, this thing, if you bang it uh, on, on the surface of a hard surface, and then when you touch the water, the water is going to cause lots of ripples. Yeah, tuning fork. And the same tuning fork, when you touch other ponds, the ripple that you're going to get becoming lesser and lesser and lesser until nothing more. Right, so the, the same concept is happening here. Right. right. So it becomes excited and then the excited electron cannot stay excited forever. What's the law? Something excited, what's the law? It will return to the ground state, right? So before it can return back to the ground state, the electron acceptor, which is a type of protein, will accept it. And these are the electron acceptor. You got field fighting, quinone A, quinone B, plus the quinone cytochrome B6F, and platocyanin. And then it will come all the way until the second photosystem, that is photosystem one. And it happens that for photosystem one to get activated, the amount of energy needed is 700 nanometer. This is slightly higher energy, slightly lower energy, but both are red. Yes? Because we know that the photosynthesis happens at 680 nanometers, why do they provide blue light to the vegetables and for, for, for two reasons. Blue light uh, can be used for photosynthesis here because eventually 400 nanometer blue can be turned into the red light. It's shifting towards the red region, number one. Number two, blue actually to trigger genetic response. On the surface of the cells is filled with photoreceptor such as phototropin. If you learn, come to my class last year, I, I, I taught this a lot. Oh, not, not, not last, nee, uh, two years back. Phototropin. So this will cause a cascade of reactions that enable the plant to grow and develop correctly. We have blue light uh, receptor as well. Right. So that's why some people, if they don't take good care of themselves as a flight lama, they can jet lag. Right. So, so that's the reason. It's not only blue light, it's not only for photosynthesis, but to trigger. That's, that's why you get the flowering. Mm, flowering, right? Okay. Blue light, blue light is very, very, very interesting story. Uh, you got all this uh, burung, uh, cari jalan balik rumah and so on. All right. Okay. So, Sorry, I kind of turn in this again. 
so the energy from the first photosystem photosystem 2 comes to the second photosystem which is photosystem 1 it got excited and then it will pass to its own electron acceptor usually sulfur containing compound and this is the reason why you give sulfur to your plant as fertilizer it's needed to energize this photosynthesis like reaction iron and sulfur and eventually it will reduce this NADP molecule to turn into NADPH so what is the what's your concern now you need to understand one thing the product of photo reaction what are the products number one you get your actually you got your oxygen here when the water is ejected from this electron uh, this uh, special chlorophyll A this pigment becomes whole berlubang and that hole needs to be filled in with somebody because the excited electron doesn't return back to the ground right it is passed to the electron receptor so this hole is actually filled with electron from water in the form of hydrogen and that's why the nearby water gets split in the process called photolysis so that it can fill in the blank of the p680 chlorophyll and in the process when it's split you got hydrogen you got oxygen two time photolysis you got one oxygen molecule Right, so that's why that you get uh, oxygen. And number two, you get this uh, energy containing compound, you get ATP. You know ATP? And NADPH. Right. This oxygen usually regarded as a byproduct. ATP and NADPH, ATP is for the energy. Energy to phosphorylate. NADPH is energy to reduce. Reduce means donate hydrogen. You see, when when you have a compound, two compounds standing to next to each other, when one compound have extra phosphate, it can donate the loose phosphate to this compound. And this process is called phosphor of uh, uh, phosphorylation, giving out the phosphate. Okay, because this is done by photo, this is called photophosphorylation with the presence of light. For the plants, for the two molecules, when one molecule, such as for example vitamin C, you see all, all the vitamin called the antioxidant, antioxidant, right? Ah, this is the story here. These uh, antioxidant vitamins or molecules, uh, they have extra electron. This extra electron, they can donate to the reactive molecule to stabilize them. What they are donating is actually hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen. When they donate their hydrogen, now the receiving molecule is said to become reduced. Okay, so the easy formula to remember this is called oil rig oxidation is losing electron reduction is gaining electron so it's, it's a good way to, to remember um, because I know when you talk about it linguistically, reduce means that you are losing something, right? No, no, no. This is in, in chemistry context. When you say something is reduced, it's actually just gain hydrogen. Somebody has been kind enough to donate the hydrogen to it. All right. So you got this and ADPH. So these two, uh, ATP and NADPH, will be used in the second reaction of the photosynthesis, which is the Kelvin cycle. Where is it happening? In the stroma, okay? No longer in the telecord membrane, right? <clears throat> so, um, I, I don't want to go to, into too much detail in here. 
So it's good to know. <coughs> you see all this blob, blob here? These are all proteins. And again, why nitrogen is a very highly critical um, element or nutrient for the plants, right? The good thing about nitrogen is it's uh, renewable and you can get it from various uh, resources. You can get it from the petroleum byproduct as in the form of urea. You can get, you can get it from the rain. You know, you can get it from the rain. Uh, provided the rain got some uh, kilat going on because the because all the uh, uh, thunderstorm going to convert all the molecular nitrogen into the usable form by the plants right okay now we move to the second reaction of photosynthesis which is the synthesis reaction remember uh, in the photo reaction we kind of get introduced to the uh, ingredient right so this is the ingredient or the substrate of the Kelvin cycle, which is CO2. What is it? It's a gas. It's a gas. At least in our um, room temperature, it's an, in a gas. How much is CO2 present in our environment? Is it a lot or very little? Oh no, CO2 is just me in this world. I'm so self-centered. So CO2 is about uh, 425 part per million now on the planet Earth. It's a bit worrying because 100 years ago, it was only 300. Yeah, With all this industrial revolution, uh, fossil fuels burning and more population, your grandparents uh, decide to have more babies. CO2 kind of climbing up very fast. During, during, during my student time, like 10 years ago, CO2 read 400 ppm. Recently, when, uh, when we check, the current planet is 425. You see how 10 years at 25 ppm? That's, that's why people are uh, getting worried about this. However, this is good for the plant because it's making the forest to become lusher, become more lush and um, more biomass is formed, right? So what you need to know about CO2 is, CO2 in the plant is in the form of liquid. So this is the journey of CO2, please pay attention. This is what you need to understand, the concept of CA, CI, and CC. C stands for the CO2, atmospheric carbon dioxide, intercellular carbon dioxide, and chloroplastic carbon dioxide, right? When we say CA, meaning that carbon dioxide outside the leaf, it has not entered the leaf, still in the gaseous form, right? So this CO2 in the form of gas will travel and approaching the surface of the leaf. And of course, it has to overcome the boundary layer that we mentioned earlier, you see, yeah? Do you know boundary layer? The concept of boundary layer. All the surfaces of objects in our planet, your skin, your neighbor's face, your car, kapal terbang, train, everything, friends and foe, anything with a surface will have a boundary layer immediately above it. And this is a film of air which is not moving. It is still. Kaku. And some say it to the point even vacuum. So when this invisible film of air is present on the surface of the leaf, it is not possible for the gas exchange to happen. CO2 to get in and also the oxygen to exit, right? So the, the first requirement for the CO2 to get into the leaf is to break the boundary layer. How can this happen? Shake the plant violently. Yeah, so this is the reason kenapa Tuhan ciptakan 
Amin. Right, you got the wind. You see, you 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 thought the wind is for you healing healing by the beach. No, it's it's actually you see you see the the plants keep, keep kind of waving back and forth back and forth. You you see lalang doing that. You see coconut doing that. Every plant, even if you go to the plant factory, they are having the fan. So these are actually to break the boundary layer so that the gas exchange can happen. And the boundary layer, of course, when you break it, the moment there is no constant movement, it will attach back. Attach, detach, attach, detach. Break and break, break and break continuously. Okay. So let's say that your fortunate CO2 has managed to enter the leaf now. Now it is inside here after it has entered the stoma here. See, you've got one stoma. Stoma is one, plural stomata. Now it's in the eye here. I stands for intercellular spaces. Or the, the porous region inside your leaf. Your leaf is not completely filled with tissue, okay? There are some air spaces, like your lung. You've got the, you know, alveoli in, in your lung? That's, that's actually air, air pocket. Uh, pretty much right here. So this is called the CI. Now it will have to undergo the resistance inside the chamber here before it reaches the cell. Now the cell, the moment the CO2 that was once before in the gaseous form touching the cell, the cell is wet. Okay, it's wet. The moment it touches the CO2, uh, the, the cell wall and the plasma membrane, the CO2 now change phase from the gas phase to the liquid phase. And then it will enter the cell and then it will go straight to the chloroplast. Right. So, can, can you imagine? It's, it's not actually easy for the CO2 journey to achieve that. So, when, when you learn this, then you can understand Oh, CO2 is therefore is quite important uh, for the plant. You, 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 you can't afford not to give ample CO2. Right. And also the wind. Right. Okay. Another um, ingredient needed for the photosynthesis, which is very important, is this guy. It's, a, it's an enzyme. It's called Rubisco. This is the enzyme responsible for carbon fixation. Okay, I think it has the Guinness World Record for this guy. You know, up to this point, right? Actually, plants hold many Guinness Book of Record, and this is actually one of them. It is said that the most abundant protein in biological kingdom is this protein, Rubisco, the enzyme. The full name of it is ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase slash oxygenase. And that's the troublesome bit, actually. When you were in school, you learned that the enzyme activity is specific, like key and padlock. Got a padlock? I got a key. And then it opens. But Rubisco, it has been around since T-Rex time. You know, all the dinosaurs terrorizing the villages. They've been around since a long time ago. It's an ancient enzyme. And back then, Oxygen were much less. It was a different. These days, you have oxygen about 21% in our uh, environment, and then about 0.4% of the 0.04% uh, of the CO2 in our environment. So, in since Rubisco has not evolved for millions of years, it has this tendency not to behave like the enzyme that you learned in school. It has dual specificity, meaning that it can cater dual reaction, the carboxylase reaction and oxygenase reaction. It's like you can open one padlock with two keys, not duplicated keys, no. The two separate keys, but these two, okay, we can open it. And this actually is a problem because if Rubisco binds to CO2, it's fine. You got your regular photosynthesis, you got your sugar, and everybody is happy. But if your Rubisco binds to oxygen, this, this, is start, this is the start of the problem. Because it 
now the process is not called photosynthesis, it is called photorespiration. In the eyes of um, us, which want the plants to perform super well, photorespiration is a metabolically wasteful process. Because it doesn't produce sugar, it uses up all the energy. Okay, but in the eyes of the plant, photorespiration is good because it helps the plant not to die. It's, a, it's one of the photoprotective mechanism, right? And because Rubisco is um, a protein, it's actually sensitive to temperature. Remember your hard-boiled egg this morning? Mm. Can you reverse your hard-boiled egg becoming the chicken egg again? Mm. Why, why, why can't you reverse it? We, we are talking about the 3D structure and conformation of the protein actually. Okay, so this, the moment heat is given to the protein, the molecule, the chemical bonds, they have the energy to make a new connection all together. Right. The thing is, they make a new connection, they already forgot how to undo. Even though you remove the, the, the energy. Right. So Rubisco, when it is too hot, remember the slide from this morning, the, the plant as it gets hotter is actually becoming um, smaller. Rubisco becomes denatured. If it goes beyond, if I'm not mistaken, beyond 42 degree, it can't be repaired. Up to 40 degree, the Rubisco can like, uh, you know, you know, if it, you fall down, kind of uh, brush, brush, brush off your shirt and then you continue running. It's fine. But above 42 degree, yeah, the Rubisco is like, you are so done, toast. Uh, the plant will expand a bit more energy to break down the Rubisco and build a new one. Right. Okay. So what? Finally, again, it's a protein. Enzyme is a protein and therefore you need, this is the reason why people are going crazy with the nitrogen giving to the plant. So, um, it's very important. And this is the Kelvin cycle. Remember the product of um, the first reaction. You have ATP. So, the product from the first reaction, you have your ATP and NADPH. These two are used now. Okay, Kelvin cycle can be divided into three phases. The first one is the fixation followed by the reduction and eventually the regeneration. Okay, fixation, reduction, regeneration. Okay, and I would like to take this to highlight as well. This machine, when you're talking about the photosynthesis, you read in the journal, right? Specifically, the machine is measuring the first part of the Kelvin cycle, which is the carbon fixation. The machine is not measuring the reduction or the regeneration. No. Regeneration to some way you can, but that involves a lot of mathematical equation. Right. So, now I hope you, you, you can understand the oversimplification of uh, many journals and books. They're calling it photosynthesis, photosynthesis, right? But that's not the entire story. The photosynthesis, they are referring just the first phase of the Kelvin cycle. Yeah, right. So what, what actually happened? So the first step is you got your CO2 that was once before in the gaseous form, now has traveled inside your plant, inside the um, cell, becoming liquid, diffused all the way to the stroma. Now it's present, you got your CO2 liquid now. And then there is Rubisco, which is always there. And then a sugar, the five carbon sugar, RUBP. This thing, RUBP. This is a five carbon sugar, ribulose bisphosphate. So this will react with the substrate CO2 with the help of Rubisco and turn it into phosphoglycerate. Glycerate first, 
Okay, it turns into glycerate first, and then ATP that you gain from the first photo reaction will come in and phosphorylate the glycerate to become phosphoglycerate. Okay, that's why you see there is a usage of ATP here, right? So this uh, become phosphoglycerate, and then this phosphoglycerate now will undergo reduction. Remember, chemical chemistry construct uh, context reduction means it receives hydrogen from where from this guy, NADPH. So NADPH. Uh, gives up its hydrogen donated to PGA phosphoglycerate to become G3P glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate and this glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate is the first stable sugar product of photosynthesis it is 3 carbon right however the, the story actually doesn't end there even though it's already exit much of the glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate, as you can see here, actually continue the cycle. The Kelvin cycle will rearrange this balance of glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate with the help of another extra ATP to become this RUBP sugar again. Right? So that's a lot of mix, match, and rearrangement. Because it has proven in nature, any biological process or mechanism, it is more sustainable and more effective when it's in the cycle form rather than linear. Your A plus B, you got C. What, what happens if your B is not enough? Then the whole reaction stops. So that's why plants have it in this cycle form. right? So coming back to the exit at the end of the reduction phase here, one molecule of uh, uh, glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate is actually half a glucose. Two times this, we got your glucose. You know glucose? Do you have glucose? A lot? <laughs> <laughs> but, but actually, uh, plants do not immediately change, uh, turn it into glucose. Please correct this understanding, okay? I was I was talking to uh, my collaborator uh, like uh, months two months back about the chat GPT and AI tools that students like to use. It keeps saying that the product of photosynthesis is glucose. That's wrong, wrong. And we tested like five different um, AI and us. Everybody asking uh, the same question. They keep on answering glucose. Actually, it's not glucose, okay? It's, uh, the right answer is sugar. And to be specific, 3-carbon sugar. And then the plants can decide. Because in the plants, there are many different kinds of sugar. Glucose, glucose is not the only one. You've got glucose, you've got sucrose, arabinose, xylose, and so many more. And the plants will make the decision what kind of sugar I feel in the mood of making today. Mm. Because the plants... Sometimes they do not need to use the sugar a lot, so it will go for the storage. Then it will go to sucrose, uh, amylose, and so on. But if the sugar is meant for signaling molecule, they, they will change it into sucrose so that it can be transported to other places, to other organ. Okay, it's called uh, translocation. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, the cycle produces sugar. Yes. Not no. Sugar can be in yes. So whatever that you see now, I like to call it sugar precursor. Sugar precursor because from the three carbon sugar, when you combine two combine, you got glucose. If you combine further, you got many kind of uh, other sugar, mannose. Uh, there are many sugar in 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 plants, right? So if that's the case, why you have lots of glucose in you, but plants do not have glucose a lot in it? Plants only make glucose very short amount of time. Only when uh, they want the mitochondria to do the job. Why? Why your blood is not filled with sucrose? 
the, the, it's, it's actually this is the reason why plants can live 500 years while you are struggling after 50. <laughs> Glucose is a reactive sugar. It's very, it's very, it's very sticky. Meaning that when it it's traveling from one point to another, it it will touch everybody and make reaction with everybody. If along the way it's kind of, if it's saying hi, it's fine. It's actually go and stop by the neighbor, and when it see protein, it fuses to the protein. Now the protein become glycated, cannot do the work. Right. So because of the reactivity of the glucose, the plants decide to use sucrose so that this sugar is not reactive. You don't talk to anybody. Just go straight to your destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus, focus. Saying, saying hi to neighbor, that can be done later. Right. So this is why control your sugar because diabetic, especially diabetic people, high sugar is causing um, AGE. Number one, betul, aging, aging too. Advice, glycated and product. You are causing the protein in your body due to the high sugar to malfunction. Hmm. One of the best remedy for anti-aging actually Yes Yeah The more sugar you take The faster your ganyot will come <laughs> Betul Because you're, you're, you're under your skin what, what, what is under your skin? Your skin is made up from what? Collagen and elastin What are they? Protein When they are protein, they are susceptible to sugar and, and you eat sugar like you own the whole factory. So glycated, glycated collagen is actually your wrinkles. Yeah. Imagine that's what you see on the outside. What happens to your organ? Mm. Masa. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And finally, to highlight, from this glyceraldehyde three phosphate, not only that the plant can decide to be sugar, it's also the precursor. That's why I like to use the word precursor. It is the precursor to other things as well, such as fatty acids and also amino acids. Okay, so can you appreciate now the importance of photosynthesis? It's not only to make sugar. Okay, it's actually to it's it's actually the beginning for many other biochemical biosynthesis. Yeah, sometimes people, you know, people go uh, buy special herbs because they are believe that herbs can uh, make them uh, look prettier and so on. It's actually not the sugar. It's actually the active compound, right? If you trace back the beginning of the active compound during the biosynthesis, it's actually start from here. Right, right. You know, people uh, get all these herbs, right? Right, uh, tongkat ali lah, tang kueh lah, cordyceps and so on. Right, you 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 are very the super, super proponents of herbs. Right, uh, doctors drugs no. Uh, so all this actually coming back to to this uh, Kelvin cycle. Right, okay. Just to recap, uh, for the photosynthesis, um, the product of the photosynthesis. So the product uh, of the First part of photosynthesis, which is the photoreaction, you get your oxygen, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and NADPH. Uh, NADPH, nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, phosphate, H. Show me some more. nak bagi orang marah. NADPNA. D P H. Ini panggil sebab tak ada H kita panggil oxidize. Oxidize nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Yang ini because it's got H we we call it reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. It's coming back to this oil rig story. You know oil rig. Have you seen oil rig? I actually I forgot the the word in Malay. Rig tu. Apa eh? Hmm. You know petroleum platform dekat tengah laut tu, the the prospect that goes into 
Gurudi, Gurudi minyak. Gurudi minyak. Alright. Okay. So you got your um, oxygen, ATP, and NADPH. For the Kelvin cycle, it uses up CO2 coming from the environment, ATP from the light reaction, and NADPH from the light reaction as well to make carbohydrates such as sugar. Sugar! Bukan glucose. Jangan. Bukan glucose. Tak betul glucose tu. Okay. And then you complete the cycle. And then that's the oversimplification of it. Ah. Boleh quiz dah? <laughs> okay. Alright. Right. And for photosynthesis, actually there are uh, modes of photosynthesis. The one that I just discussed with you is the most common uh, mode of photosynthesis. It's called C3 photosynthesis because the first product that exits Kelvin cycle is 3 carbon. So we call it C3 photosynthesis. But there are other plants that have evolved because they live in adverse condition. The first product of carbon in their photosynthetic pathway is actually the 4 carbon. So we have the C4 photosynthesis and also the CAM photosynthesis. C4 photosynthesis such as um, jagung, tebu, uh, you know, you know, corn right? How, how long does it take for you to harvest rice? If you're familiar with rice cultivation. 120 days. Okay. Good, people know. How long do you take to harvest corn? 70 days. Both are grasses. So how come it takes only 70 days, almost half the time for the corn, but it takes us uh, like uh, four months for the rice? Because of this. C4 photosynthesis in the hot climate, super, super effective. Super, super productive. Right. But in the cooler region, C3 wins. Okay. And then finally is the camp photosynthesis. It stands for Crassulation Acid Metabolism. This is usually plants that are fleshy, such as uh, cactus, uh, um, succulent, uh, aloe vera, dragon fruit, yeah, yeah, dragon fruit. Dragon fruit is cactus. Oh, tengok tak percaya. Cactus. Have you seen dragon fruit tree? Uh, is it a tree? <laughs> it's, it's actually flash, flash much uh, much um uh, cactus, right? Okay, so uh, for the camp photosynthesis, uh, the good example is uh, pineapple, right? Okay, right. So that's the first uh, part of photosynthesis. What time now? Eleven thirty. Okay, so I have about another one hour to go. Any question up to this point? Yeah. Um, Rubisco. Yeah. So, is it the environmental factor can uh, affect either the plant, the growth, or the growth? Yes. So, what kind of methods that you use to find out? Ah, good question. This, this is why people, some people they are doing CO two enrichment method. If you if you if you go to the plant factory, actually uh, they have the CO2 tank. They inject the CO2, high CO2, just during the day to suppress the uh, photorespiration. Because when CO2 is a lot, oxygen is difficult to win. It's not that oxygen is completely absent, no. But yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is C3. C3 plants have not evolved. If you are C4 plants and can plants, that's completely almost zero, I think zero photorespiration. Yeah. And another another way is uh, to make it cooler. To make it cooler. So um, they are using the saturating light, uh, increasing CO2 concentration, and to bring down the temperature by a few degrees, about 5 degrees. So these three things, uh, and sometimes they give the extra magnesium as well. And these four things, actually the, the recipe 
you can use to greatly reduce photorespiration in C3 plants. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that was the question last year. Abila kita tak siapa beri ingat ya, Wak? Alright. Ada soalan lagi? Ada. You can ask from earth to heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, magnesium actually to re to increase the pH around Rubisco. When when the pH is slightly basic, Rubisco lagi senang nak melekat dengan CO2. Hmm. So that's the function of uh, magnesium as a buffer. Sebab magnesium banyak guna dalam buffer solution. The moment you have magnesium, it's not easy to change the pH. Buffer, buffer kan? Hmm. Plus magnesium is also needed for the chlorophyll. Remember? So good. It's magnesium is good to capture to help pigments capture better light. Magnesium also help the stability of the pH in the soup of the stroma. Okay. I think cerita ni tak ada dalam Wikipedia kot because this is actually from the book. Hmm. Wikipedia, Wikipedia is not wrong because other people yang keep on checking on it tapi the story sometimes is not entirely there, the kind of missing alright, ok now so sekarang dah um, you have been reviewed exposed re-remembered about the photosynthesis so the plants, they are not living on their own, ok Okay, plants are not reclusive, jauh sekali ke resumbang. They are what we call as dynamic, actively changing, highly responsive to the environmental cues. And so this is why it's important to have another short topic here, uh, photosynthesis and ecological consideration. So people that are highly skillful in here, we call it ecophysiologist. And we have as well here. Yeah, uh, so tak payahlah semua datang cari cari aku ramai je orang lain lagi uh, ecophysiologist so let's see so the plant is responding to light actually this is the allowing things in a way that you saw earlier uh, carbon dioxide, water, soil structure, nutrients and actually there are many more there are microbes uh, with, uh, with some weathering agents um, and so on so we'd like to see how can this impact photosynthesis? So if we divide the plants into three layers, the subterranean layer or underground, and then the plant level, the plant itself, to the height of the plant, and whatever above it, the canopy region. So you can see that there are many factors that the plant can um, have, respond, and determine the eventual photosynthetic rate. Okay, for example, um, uh, when, when the plant is um, highly uh, in the windy, uh, rainy area, or high solar radiation, for a tropical plant, that's fine. Okay, tropical plant is fine. But when, when the plant is having a bit much of one environmental factors while the others stay the same this can cause the plants to need to deal with it for example there's a lot of water for, uh, rainfall and the temperature is correct but suddenly the solar, solar radiation is a bit much right because the you know the earth is um, orbiting around the uh, sun there are certain times of the year, the solar angle, the inclination of our planet Earth is actually kind of in the angle directly to the sun of uh, solar radiation. So this actually increases the intensity. And when the plants um, sensing this, this actually have impact on the photosynthesis and also how much it can deal with other factors. Uh, of course, the plants need to increase its photoprotection mechanism, make more 
uh, sunblocks, the pigments. But <clears throat> when the plants are busy making the pigments, can they do make extra organ of interest to harvest? So you see, this is becoming less. Okay, so this is why climate change is very, very important to be understood correctly. Because if you don't understand the climate change, the, the pattern that is happening, you are going to plant your crop in the wrong season. Right. For example, uh, our, our country is having the monsoon season, right? From November to March. This is when you get the heaviest uh, downpour. So it's good to plant the rice during this time, but it is not a good time to grow corn. Corn is very sensitive to water logging and heavy rainfall because it's a C4 plant. Remember I said C4 is designed for the hot arid condition, right? So this information about all these environmental factors will help you to better decide when to uh, plant your crop and also is there any things that I, I can do for my plants to reduce the adverse environmental effects, right? Okay, so at the leaf level, so this is like, we call it the cross scale modeling framework. So we have the leaf level photosynthesis. This is just one leaf, which is this machine can greatly uh, use. And then we have photosynthesis um, and the canopy, meaning that the total contribution of all leaf together. Because photosynthesis, if you have a given plant, a corn plant, right? The photosynthesis in each leaf is not the same. Okay? Because there are leaves that get shaded by the higher leaf, and leaves that are senescing, leaves um, that have been um, predated on, eaten by the herbivory uh, organism, and so on. And then when you look at the, uh, the in here, the crop growth and development and yield, and this is this is where all of this that I uh, said earlier comes into place. Because plant is a busy organism, its only job is not only to produce the organ of harvest for you. It has to ensure its own species continuum. When the time comes, it has to flower, it has to produce to bear fruits, even though you are only interested with the leaf. Right, and also because it's in the soil, if the soil is healthy, it's good. But what about the pH is not right? What about if the, the, the microbes um, symbiosis is not healthy? There is, there is um, imbalance in the microbes diversity. So it has to deal this on a consistent basis. What, what if... Um, suddenly there is a loss of precipitation. So all of this, the plants need to uh, deal by itself. It can do it, but if you want your crop to do well, you need to understand all these environmental factors. Are they contributing to the crop growth, development and yield, or are they hampering it somehow? Okay. Let's see some, some, some example here. So this is um, soybean, right? So in the, there's a two here, A and B, cooler and hotter, right here. In the cooler, cooler, cooler years, high atmospheric CO2 elevates CO2 within the leaf. So it's pretty much photosynthesis is increasing. Stomata are open because it's cooler. The plants do not have to worry so much. And it's able to bear any fruits. And the yield increased by 22%. Yeah. Why? Simply because the stomata open. But on the hotter, drier year, there's a drought season, of course. The roots, the moment it's sensing drought or insufficient um, in hydration, some hormones are going to be produced and sent upward, such as abscisic acid. And this is causing the stomata to close. Again, only one organ that is doing the, all the action now. What happened to the plant? How about the biomass? 
You get less biomass. Do you get soybean? Do you get more soybean or less soybean? Less. Okay, this is the point I want to highlight here. It's not only less soybean that you get. You might be getting less nutritious soybean as well. Yeah, and this is the, the thing that people take into account when they are discussing about food security. Food security is not only about ensuring the food is sufficient and adequate for the, the rest of the planet. It's, it's all about nutrition because not everybody go to Watson and buy multivitamins. Okay? What you eat is your nourishment. When you have spent your time and effort to get the produce to eat from here, while it's not nutritious, all you get as all you get is is actually hunger satiety. That's it. There's no nutrient coming. But what if you understand this situation? You can see that ah, the stomata are closing. Then it's going to impact the biomass. And even though we got the soybean, but the soybean is less nutrition. What can be done here? So the issue now is the hotter, drier air. Can you change the temperature? No. But can you do something about the soil? Yeah. You can maybe do the drip irrigation. Or maybe mix the soil with some kind of polymer that absorb water, such as hydrogen. This will not only make the plant happy, but it will lessen the stress experienced by the plants okay so is it going to be as good as this no it won't but you less lessen the blow right so understanding photosynthesis understanding the environmental impact not only just to fulfill your requirement of feel oh we need 10 ton this season we need 20 tons this season no it's the, the question is, is much bigger than that you know there are many uh, children in africa they eat the rice but they are still blind actually it's not blind at first it's to start with the cracking of the skin because the the the, the soil is poor and then the environment is like this environment the plant produce that they eat from there not necessarily nutritious yeah because if the government understand one thing that they will pay attention to is to improve the infrastructure irrigation right because the farmers even though even though they don't they are not able to get uh, expensive fertilizer they can still get it from the uh, natural resources. They got cows. You know cows, what they do? What? Produce chocolate milk. <laughs> uh, right. So all these things actually give implication to the policy from the high level, high level. So when you see that the agriculture policy is not very um, uh, facilitating the goodness of everyone, Trust me, those that making the authority do not understand good science. They are just authority or people that like to imagine and then ask people one or two and then make the policy. So are you that? Uh, janganlah jadi macam tu. Alright, so coming to here. So how can you quantify the yield? So you got a photosynthesis, now you got yield. So the yield here, we call this... Um, uh, RUE, radiation use efficiency. This is uh, radiation use, this is HR, is the harvest index. So you have ensured that your chloroplast is healthy, you give the right kind of fertilizer that is uh, having the healthy tissue, photosynthesis and all, then you will get your plant, you'll get plant producing harvest and the leaf, the leaf that that is resulting from the right breed and also sufficient fertilization will have the best of radiation interception and this contribute to the overall improve in harvest index <clears throat> so remember um, breeding is not the whole story no you can have the best of variety that you can claim appear on the straight times but if you don't take good care of your plant you kind of ignoring the soil, 
the good, even the good variety is, is going to suck them. Okay, now, so with the understanding of photosynthesis and ecology, you can manipulate photosynthesis capacity. And this is why you are learning. Because what can I do to, because I know my plant is doing just well at the carbon fixation. Because it's a corn, your plant. Very good at carbon fixation. But can something be done in the first part of it, the light reaction? Because all this while you think that my corn photosynthesis has reached the ceiling. It can't go any further. All I can do now is wait for the syngenta to produce new corn seeds. And of course, they're going to charge you more. They're not doing charity. But if you understand physiology and ecology for that matters, do you think you can do something to improve the light reaction? Of course you can. Of course you can. You see now, right, uh, the, the light reaction, these, these are the products. Oxygen, ATP, and DPH. Perhaps you do the foliar spraying in the form of phosphate. Lots of phosphate, you're going, you're going to get more and more ATP. And that's going to make your Kelvin cycle to run, to run even faster. For example, yeah. What about the physical of the plant? Like the vein density. So you know, you know one thing. Um, when the plant has... One thing about photosynthesis, uh, Kelvin cycle, I'm talking about Kelvin cycle now. The sugar that has been produced by Kelvin cycle, it has to exit immediately the chloroplast. It shouldn't get crowded in the chloroplast because the moment it's crowded, the Kelvin cycle will stop. Actually, that's the, the, the truth of it. So this is why you can see that the cross section of the leaf uh, in, the, in the earlier slide you, you saw today, the photosynthetic cells very close to the vein. Why? Because they want, after they have made the, all the sugar, transport, go, go somewhere, go somewhere. Yeah, and that is called uh, triose phosphate utilization. You, 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 you want your plant to utilize the sugar, not keeping it crowded in the chloroplast, right? And you know this information now. Can you do something about the breeding? Maybe you want to breed for leaf with higher vein density because you know, the more the veins that the leaf has, the quicker the plumbing work is going to, work, to, to happen. You got sugar, it's transported. You got sugar, it's, 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 it's translocated somewhere. And when this is highly efficient, the plant is going to be very productive and it is going to tr get translated in the uh, harvest. Right. Yeah, for example, in here. So we got the low vein density, high vein density. It's not only to transport the sugar, it's also for the water. And since the plant has more leaf now, uh, more veins now, it's very strong. When the strong wind come, you know, we're talking about ecology now, the ones that have more veins is going to be very sturdy. It's not easy to lodging and fall down, right? So imagine this, but just because you have understood this all, just by in, um, having your plants to have more vein density, not only that you facilitate the photosynthesis to become at higher rate, but you also strengthen your plant. And also, in a way, you, you make the plants uh, very good at uh, water use usage. Mm. Right? Okay. Right. And the other thing, of course, uh, um, the, the microbes. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this. Just, just good to know. It's pretty much like your gut. Okay. <clears throat> What, what identify you? How do you know you are you? This, this is not philosophical question. This is actually a um, genetic question.
Is it possible this thing? Okay. All right. So what 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 do you find you? So one one might say that oh I'm defined by my genetic sequence, my genome. So can you agree? You are defined by your genome, your genetic constituent. Hmm. I just want to see. Who who said that you are defined by your genetic sequence, your genome? Because you have a special genes in your chromosome. That's actually your identity. Who says it? Who says that? Three, four. Four. Who does it agree? Genetic this the sequence doesn't define me. I can actually become a dragon one day. <laughs> who said that? Eh, cepat lah. Kena kena be certain. Now you you science. Now you doing you doing you doing good science, right? Who's on the fence? Ah, tu dah kata tu dah. orang juga. If you want to use DNA, RNA and stuff, nucleic acid as your identity determinant, actually you are not you. You know why? If you collect the whole of your DNA and then you put it into one spoon, it's only one spoon, all of your DNA in your cell, keluarkan air benda semua, just the, the DNA. And then if you collect all of DNA and genomic constituent of the microbes in your gut, you will have 10 spoon. Your genetic material, only one spoon. The microbes in you got 10 spoon. So are you you? Hmm. Have you thought about that before? <laughs> Actually, in a way, in, in a way, memang, um, microbiome uh, diversity is actually guide your emotions, guide your health levels, uh, and, and, and and many more. So whether whether you're going to get acne or not, or whether you're going to get diabetes or not, yeah, yeah. So if you if you have that concept translated into the plant that is growing in the soil, do you think you can disregard the soil now? You just focus on photosynthesis, give the uh, fertilizer to the maximum possible without paying attention to the microbes. That's not a healthy step to take. So that's why um, I would like to encourage more, more, more um, uh, company actually to pay attention to this. Actually, some, something is a simple thing. You have your fertilizer, then you have some amount of sugar in it. You know, this correct carbon nitrogen ratio in your fertilizer not only will make your plant happy, but to make the all these microbes to thrive as well, right? So when, when this happens, the moment your plant is harvested, <coughs> the next cycle, you don't have to put chemical fertilizer as much because these microbes have actually kept it for you. Yeah. How about we plant the fruit uh, the the in soil structure? Yeah. Yeah. Soil structure got microbes as well in the cocoa pit um, and so on. If you sample the water from the hydroponic system, the NFD, there are microbes actually. So there are microbes that are soil born, there are microbes that are aquatic. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, some microbes are anaerobic, some microbes are aerobic. So there are experiments actually, people kind of uh, doing the aquaponic. Aquaponic, right? Aquaponic, you, aquaponic meaning that um, you are having all the fish in there, right? And then they compare to the regular tank of hydroponic, just a nutrient solution. The, the plants in the aquaponic tank having all the fish, even though much less or maybe no nitrogen given, is doing much better than the one in the regular hydroponic that you have all the expensive fertilizer. Yeah. Why? Because it, it, it happens that some of these microbes actually have gotten into the plant. 
not in a bad way but to facilitate the plants to absorb the nutrient better the nutrient in the soil is always there but it is unavailable to the plant sometimes the plants release hydroxyl or hydrogen to absorb the nutrient but when some microbes are there you can get more phosphate yeah you know phosphate rock in 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 our our soil the, the plant actually cannot uh, up, uh, take up the nutrient by its own that's actually the the jobs of the microbes mm. and phosphate tak boleh nak recycle it's not like nitrogen yeah so hydroponic yes we got the uh, uh, microbes for for that as well <coughs> so kalau 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 want about phd that's a good topic <laughs> <coughs> but all, it's a, it's a good topic actually <coughs> For, for uh, system aquaponik lepas tu aquaponik satu um, ikan ikan laga aku ada ke rumah ikan laga jadi ah aquaponik buat ikan tilapia yeah yeah so and when you study the water actually oh ikan uh, from all the fish that you are working with ikan puyu has the most diverse microbe in the water and in the root region So, so no no one no wonder lah the the plant got so large uh, budget tak bagi pun ah uh, ikan bandar raya it is uh, dia makan dia uh, akar tu which haris remember we tried that dia makan semua benda akar masa kelas we tried before for the class the, that ikan i think ikan bandar raya tu lah kot eh puyuh ke ah uh, orang oh, oh. aku dah memfitnah ikan <laughs> Some some fish actually not suitable for aquaponic. Dia uh, makan akar tu. So we 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 learn it. <laughs> okay. And then finally interaction of plants. When it's what 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 setting is this? What do you call this? You got plant. You got that's not boss. Actually that's home. You got building. Ada ada bangunan bangunan belakang. Ada small plant. What do you call this? urban lah urban bukan urban bahasa cakap slang tak faham tu you know urban urban setup so you have buildings you have humans living you have uh, pokok besar you have vegetation small vegetation you you can see that plants that live in urban setup actually they are interacting with not only human but the structure okay there are certain region in the urban ada region yang cool, ada region yang trap. It's not the same macam forest. Forest is actually pretty much homogeneous. And and some trees, you might you might surprise to know this. Some trees, when they feel like they need water, they create their own clouds. Did you know that? Some trees can create their own clouds. Macam mana dia buat? How? Uh, they spray some kind of aerosol to to above the canopy. That's like the the apa uh, seeded cloud seeding and then the, the the moisture will be attracted and then they got the just the rain shower for that region All right so what, what about the photosynthesis for plants that have in this um, anthropogenic region the urban setup when you have plant it's good you have plants on the ground small vegetation you have plant climbing on the wall You have plants on the roof, the green roof. You have the regular tree. Greatly benefited by the plant is the human, right? But is it going to benefit the plant? In this in this setup, who do you want to benefit more, the plant or the human? Both. Dia kan dia tak ada sugar neraka schooner. Dia tak ada, dia tak ada in between schooner tu. <laughs> yeah, either you go left or go uh, go go to go to the hole. Okay, sebab tu context, sebab tu kena faham photosynthesis dan ecological consideration ni. When your concern is human, you have you have to consider what plants to use what combinations to use and the distance and where they are located okay 
and usually these are the plants that you do not harvest you don't ha really have particular organs of interest as long as they are growing for a considerably long time and low maintenance go for it right because you're not going to harvest if, if suddenly it's, uh, some, something come out under uh, lima uh, that's a bonus yeah if you go come on eh? where, where did i go oh so young that time hmm where did i go huh? the whole city is filled with pokok wahorin rome actually i remember rome so jalan rome ada a few apa tu historical punya ni kan ada coliseum ada apa roman forum by by the cities tu masa tu sama hari raya kelima ha, orang pergi setara rumah berziarah menziarah kisah darah mara aku ziarah roman emperor by the uh, street tu masa tu all the trees are actually a fruiting season so jalan-jalan tu you can actually petik benda tu uh, makan memang no, nobody is saying anything it's actually buah it looks like macam buah sangkis I think tapi uh, somebody is masa tu cakap dia kata oh this is satsumas mana tengok satsumas satsumas satsuma ah tengoklah nanti benda satsuma sedap lah benda free <laughs> Dia 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 bukan entailer mana tu dia ada pahit-pahit susi sikit. Ah uh, dia dia tapi tapi okey lah. Ah uh, memang lah. Oh. Aku cakap dorian ke? Aku cakap berimau kan. Oh geng tu. Ah uh, dia benda tu saya suruh masuk. So or um, the municipality of Rome growing all these uh, oranges is actually to benefit the human ke for the plants. Uh, dekat sini sebenarnya yang hybrid tu it wants to benefit both sebab satu it provides the shades it's, provide, it's providing the shades by the uh, pedestrian worker and also to prevent sebab Romney is a very ancient city if there is no proper anchorage to the pavement nanti rebak tanah tu so the plant is holding cement together keeping the city cooler and feeding the homeless dekat negara Europe dia tak macam Malaysia, Malaysia ni susah nak nampak gelandangan gelandangan homeless, betul lah kan, gelandangan tapi dekat negara uh, luar Malaysia ni orang yang homeless is actually everywhere duduk bawah jambatan, duduk berkokok duduk mata-mata so these, these are the their nutrition so they can get the nutrition from 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 the tree and the tree is actually providing for the human in the urban setup some kind of goodness as well so kenapa dia grow limau number one it's a perennial you don't have to change it next year this is not rice it can last well into 100 years no problem this this is perennial uh apa dia orchard fruit tree Eh, macam durian kan, very 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 old and this 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 uh, apa tu from the family of frutase family limau when it's blooming, before the fruit they bloom right the smell of the flowers is very sweet this attract natural pollinators to come and then it pollinates the nearby farm you see it's not only benefiting the urban but they're benefiting the farmers too sebab of the sweet smell ni, tak tahu lah you, you pernah uh, cium bunga limau, bunga limau wangi lah, sweet, sweet uh, apa apa if you want to apa essential oil kan, uh, go for this ni limau lah ni, ni roli uh, it's good for heartbroken it's a, it's a type of citrus juga, tapi people extract the the smell of the flower okay so you understand photosynthesis you understand ecology it is suitable to be planted there it's going to benefit the plant it's going to benefit the, the people that's the perfect setup for it tapi if you don't understand this concept you just tanam ah tak apalah tanam durian kat tepi tu are, are the homeless going to be happy about it 
kan taking a nap hoi lulah kononnya dah pop <laughs> during kami during the hot season <laughs> that's that's not happy right so consideration consideration okay so to understand this environmental impact on the plant this is what this machine can do the response curve so there are banyak response curve so uh, for example the first one here uh, on on the x axis we can decide anything that we want to test at different levels for example this is called the light response curve you are playing around with light uh, intensity from the low zero intensity all the way to 1000 intensity by the way your um, your sawi tadi lrc tu kan sebelum lupa baik cakap tak betul juga sebab tak ada kosong i think i think tak ada kosong tu so which is tak betul lah tak betul right and then this is the leaf temperature you can see that by varying the leaf temperature which this machine can do as well because it has a special equipment in here called Peltier device it can plus minus 10 degree so let's say that your temperature now is 30 it can go as high as 40 it can, it can go as low as 20 from the current thunderstorm I know current temperature it, it sounds like a thunderstorm <laughs> right and the other example is the CO2 response curve so imagine this do you have a time travel machine I kata oh ada saya kena Doraemon ah tak ada <laughs> that doesn't count Doraemon doesn't want to friend with you the concept in food security another concept in food security providing climate ready crops you know climate ready because our world now is actively changing it's very unstable to the point past pattern doesn't help anymore to predict next year nak jadi apa tengok kena sometimes tempat uh, banjir teruk kan tempat tu the whole life tak orang tak pernah banjir banjir tiba-tiba panas tiba-tiba uh, i don't know whether i think two weeks ago kot the grave in the river has not appeared for 100 years but since it's been very hot now then the the grave resurfaced uh, and the whole family come down to make the uh, the prayer eh betul lah ada berita ada cerita tu aku baca tak kat mana kat kedah pun ah right kat kedah kan right. so it's 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 been 100 years in the river now it's visible because of this um, erratic climate change so it's, it's not a good thing actually so this machine can help you if you are on the quest you are trying to understand beside creating a new variety is there any treatment that can apply to the plants to make the plants more ready if for example the temperature go as high as 40 yeah so use this machine and then you do the theoretical temperature increment or decrease to mimic that something that you expected to happen in the future so this is like your time machine you can't go to 2050 but based on the modeling data scientists have have said in 2050 temperature is going to be this much uh, uh, relative humidity is going to be this much and the solar radiation is going to be this much you can set this environment in here to mimic the theoretical environment condition in 2050 <coughs> so without having to wait for another 20 30 years you can know whether your plant variety is suitable or otherwise or your treatment is actually going to be helpful in the future mm. yes. right kan right simulation tapi ini bukan simulation kira-kira tadi -kira simulation actually the, the physical thing lah right okay so um these uh, at, you have the soft copy for this right you can click this uh, it will bring you to this um, useful curve fitting tool in order to do this uh, response curve depending on what you want to do you want to do the light response curve we're going to learn how to do this but tomorrow today I just want to introduce you to the existence of such a measurement using this uh, um, instrument All right. 
<coughs> so we are going to focus for tomorrow two type of response curve the light response curve and carbon dioxide response curve because these two are the most common that you need to understand and deal with when it comes to climate ready you 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 want to understand whether it's suitable for different regional brazil malaysia near the equator right tapi doesn't mean that when you have your uh, rice variety here is going to be happy in brazil equator tapi brazil ada microclimate ada microclimate dia and plus the people that don't don't speak malay the plant allergic i don't i don't like to hear this right so light response curve um is i'm, I'm referring to this okay the first image here the light response curve what information can you get number one you can get the dark respiration rate meaning that in the darkness how much is the activity of mitochondria uh, earlier you learned about photosynthesis that chloroplast doing right now during the dark this thing turn off the light then you can quantify how much co2 is released by the leaf and that's actually highly correlated to the mitochondrial activity right that's why it's called dark respiration rate and then light compensation point you, you want to understand um it's okay okay at what point of light photosynthesis and cellular respiration overlap that is called compensation point like compensation point photosynthesis using up co2 they're using respiration giving out co2 so there is a going in and out at the same time during the day you have dominant photosynthesis during the night you have dominant respiration yeah. so scientists would like to know what is the minimum amount of light to to get this value overlap meaning that the net co2 exit and out of the leaf zero so that's like compensation point so that tells that tells a lot actually plants that um, highly adapted to shade area they will have light compensation at um, lower value meaning that small amount of photon is enough to trigger the photosynthesis to become super effective right and then quantum efficiency is um, the slope of the curve you see the curve uh, got that way right so the first part of the curve the slope of it is the um, quantum efficiency meaning that for a unit of absorbed photon or quanta how much carbon is fixed right if your plant is very effective right, of course you're going to get lots and the light saturated is the maximum photosynthesis yeah so this is important uh, the fourth the fourth one is important if you want to do the co2 response curve because the co2 response curve you must give the plant saturating light and this is how you get the saturating light by doing the light response curve meaning that the maximum amount of light given to the plant and even if you increase the light the photosynthesis stay flat plateau right <clears throat> okay so this is the regular looking of photos uh, light response curve zero right respiration okay respiration and this is a compensation point that I was talking about. You see, it kind of overlap here, right? And this is the light saturation point, or sometimes people call P max, maximum photosynthesis. I want to highlight here actually. You see, if you further increase the light intensity, it won't any longer go flat, but it's actually going down. This going down region is called the photo inhibition meaning that the plant has undergone photo bleaching too much of good things remember light is energy right you go to sauna with your cousin long thrice removed very happy in the sauna room and catching back the old stories and so on that the twice removed cousin got so jealous increased the temperature to 80 
<laughs> What's going to happen to you in the sauna room? Are you going to be like, oh, steady and continue the, the story sharing? Or are you going to uh, somehow going down? Yes. Right. Too much, too much, too much of energy. Right. Like the sauna room in terms of the infrared uh, intensity too. It's become, it's become hotter and hotter. Right? <coughs> right. Okay. These two um, curve here, you got the orange, you got the blue. Tell me, which one is the shade plant? You know shade plant, the understory plant? Which one is the sun plant? Sun uh, plants that grow like rice, open sun, tropical. Which one is shade? Orange or blue? Uh, what about the sun plant? Blue. Why? Yes. Number one, because it can withstand higher uh, light intensity. No problem. I got all the pigments to protect me. Right. This, however, it's not like uh, the plant is incapable. No, sometimes it's the genetic constraint. Right. You can have sawi from uh, Malaysia, bred in Malaysia, cabbage and so on. And then you can have sawi and cab uh, uh, cabbage bred in London. One is tropical, one is uh, temperate. Both having the same scientific name. But when you do the light response curve, the London one is going to be the blue or orange? Orange. It's going to be orange. Dia tak biasa apa terik-terik matahari Zohor ni. Tapi the one you have been bred in Malaysia, no problem. Go up. Right. Something like that. Okay. So this is just uh, the, just the, the, for the uh, something similar. So what you need to fit into the curve fitting tools are these two components. The II is actually the incident light. Uh, or the light intensity and then the PN the and the net photosynthesis both of which is present uh, when you extract the data out of this the data coming out from it in the form of Excel you just need to know which column is it right so you just fit into it then it's going to give you this beautiful light response curve you, you, you see some people they want to find this oh sorry they want to find this um, inflection point or the photo inhibition point. You know why? Because if you spray with the plant with something, it, you can prevent it from going up. It will start going up. What? CO2 injection. Yeah. During this time, CO2 is constant. Because you are varying the light intensity, CO2 stay consistent. It's your constant variable. The manipulative variable here is your light intensity. Right. So the moment you have found here, meaning that if the plant is already in, let's say that this is the light intensity of uh, 800, 800 micromole of light is enough for the plant. No need to make it 1,500. But if you want to increase, this is the point you inject the CO2. You see? Precision. You know, some people doing the satellite imaging, right? The GIS, GPS, and so on. Do, they want to do the precision agriculture. This is another form, form of precision agriculture. But you use the machine to help you. <coughs> you know, you know uh, when the leaf is going to start to plateau, and then this is the light you set in your growth chamber, and this is the time you inject the CO2. It's going to save a lot of resources and your it's not it's not like trial and error. You know it's going to work well because the, the machine has helped you do the simulation. Right. And this is a curve fitting tool, uh, something like this. So these are the information that I mentioned earlier. You can get the dark respiration, the apparent quantum yield, like composition point. These are all calculated based on the input data point. These are not calculated, okay? Observation, this is from the machine. Yep. Um, but let's go back slightly before. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, yes, it's a little bit of net is measured in terms of how much the O2 being absorbed. Yeah, the, the, unit, the unit is, oops, 
the unit untuk assimilation dia ok I'll tell you dia ada sinonim tau net photosynthesis assimilation ataupun photosynthesis saja. semua ni sinonim depending on the paper that you're looking at <coughs> assimilation selalu unit dia adalah micromole uh, CO2 per second Uh, so it, it, it talks about the ability of the leaf to assimilate carbon per square area per second in the unit of micromole nak tahu micromole tu apa? Ah, tadi dah belajar kan micromole mole berapa? micron berapa? 10 to the power of what? micro Okay. Uh, answer the question. Does it does it answer the question? Is it good? Apa? Nak unit je kan? Apa lagi? <coughs> dia dia okey macam ni. <coughs> This alat ni <laughs> sebenarnya nak kena ajar tak apa apalah. I'll just show it ahead of time. This console can decide how much CO2 send to the measuring chamber so let's say that the the machine uh, send instruction to send through the gas cable 400 ppm CO2 after the gas has passed through the chamber it's going to the back of this um, uh, measuring head it will detect how much CO2 is left now if originally it gives 400 now after it has gone through the chamber the new reading is 380 20 points of CO2 has been used so this 20 points is plugged in into equation to give the photosynthesis reading in the form of this unit yeah and that's why I said earlier The photosynthesis is actually measuring the first part of the Kelvin cycle. The carbon fixation part. Remember, Kelvin cycle got three phases. Uh, fixation, lagi. Reduction, and then regeneration. Jangan lupa, minum jus citrus, bukan jus semut. <laughs> okay, so this is the curve. Uh, right. And the other one that we're going to have a look later is the CO2 response curve. Right. So, what information we're going to get? Again, the CO2 composition point, sama saja. We want to know the when the use and release is the same, just like the light response curve. And the carboxylation efficiency. This is relates to the Rubisco, actually. Right. However, most journal if you do get this they will ask for the biochemical side of it um, you get the carboxylation or the speed of the rubisco because rubisco is enzyme right it's got speed how many reaction it can cater for minute for example if you have a lab you can actually quantify the rubisco for example using a technique called sds page right so is coupled then the, the, the result is stronger and also the stomata limitation okay remember co2 beef after the boundary layer who is going to eat meat first stomata 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 so some stomata uh, this is a, a great study actually And 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 uh, one one of the many things that scientists try to manipulate because many people believe if you can manipulate the stomata in just the right way, yeah, it can be good for another 30 years before another climate uh, climate tsunami coming. Yeah. Because uh, stomata actually control the carbon cycle on our planet. Stomata is on, not only one; it per plan. There are, there are millions, billions, right? And then carboxylation limitation. This is actually referring to this thing, RUBP or this. This thing in the in the third cycle, in the third phase of the Kelvin cycle, it's it's talking about regeneration, right? Yeah, Kelvin cycle tells you 
how much of regeneration is happening or not happening. Yeah. Right. So this is the example. Right. On the top, you can see the CO CO two response curve for two plant system. You got the C three plant and the C four plant. Hmm. Which plant do you think is more efficient and productive? Based on that, C four. I'll give you two minutes. You can discuss with your friend. From these two, which one is more productive, effective? To give you some perspective, uh, C three our most plant, such as rice. And the C4 is corn, the 70 days harvest that I mentioned just now. Take two minutes. <coughs> Come on, attendance. Uh, did not masuk mode uh, uh, lecturer nama masuk Zoho. <laughs> did not minta attendance. <laughs> Mana? <laughs> huh? Hila. Bak Sat Pinjam, pinjam Yes Or, or productive Efficient, productive Ini apa nak? Oh, asing Okay, okay, okay Pangka-pangka ni apa? Dia tak setuju? Oh, dia tak setuju Oh, tapi hari ketiga dia ada Oh, ok, ok Ya, ya, ya Ya Um, petang nanti kot ada 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 I think ada nak tentative tu it should it should be enggak tentative ada seorang je ada seorang lelaki sudah kan Ah, dua ekor ni doesn't count. Ni, ni, ni my, my, my apa force slave. <laughs> Kita tanya yang stand out lah. Siapa ni? Ka, Kageshwaran, kanan, mana? Apa master PhD? Ah, okay, alright. So between C4 kata lega jadi perempuan hari ni kan? <laughs> Jangan gembira. Hidup ni panjang. <laughs> Life is long. Right. And people are getting meaner. <coughs> Antara, within the C3 and C4, which one do you think is more productive or effective? C4. Why? If I, I could uh, disagree with you, saying that C3 has higher photosynthesis. Look at that. Okay. At, at this point, 600, who's having higher photosynthesis? Mm. But, okay, the but, okay. Ah, ramai nak tolong. Okay, apa? Ah. But then, uh, because I know space only 400, then we have to supply extra carbon okay. dioxide, right? Okay, 400 dekat sini. Alright. So that means that it's not measurable under our atmosphere? Uh, tapi 400 all the time, ke? So it's lower than 200 then, right? Apa dia? Lower than 400. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. I say that. You see, one thing about CO2 around plants, it fluctuates actually. If you go dekat ladang, 
buah pagi-pagi pukul 9 sesak nafas. Eh bukan sesak, uh, um, bukan uh, bukan sesak nafas, rasa gembira. You got lots of oxygen. Sebab fotosintesis is, is is highly happening. <coughs> Because apa? Ah, tak apa, tak apa, tak apa. Boleh je. Ramai, ramai orang tahu. People are sympathizing with you. Eh, hey, girls are, are sympathizing with you. You take it. Don't complain. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's that's right. Um, C C four plants. One of the different is it's time unlimited. C three plants. Dia tidur tak waktu tengah hari. You can't do the photosynthesis so much because we call it midday depression. C4 plant, I don't care. I'll just work like a horse. Right. <coughs> Actually, I got I got this question a lot some time ago. <coughs> this is this, this is just to 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 show you, but how how less mathematical is our brain? Because semua orang belajar tak calculus. Orang suruh muka. Jangan biru lagi. Sekejap. <laughs> Bukan nak suruh buat calculus kat sini. You know calculus? What, what do you use calculus for? Area under curve. Ni. You see, ada calculus belajar masa apa ni? Um, form, form 4, form 5. Pembezaan dan pengamiran. You know? Cal uh, if you look at this, You can say that, oh, because the cumulative CO2 for C4 plant, area under C4 plant, if you, cal if you keep on adding using calculus, that's way more. AUC, area under curve, compared to C3 plant. So, dia jadi macam ni lah. Mana pen? Cakap calculus terus nak lari. Jangan. So, you have satu macam ni. Satu lagi macam ni. So, the area under blue is this much. The area for green only this much. So, when you calculate using calculus, AUC, definitely blue has more. More carbons has been fixed for this entirety of CO2 testing. Right. So, boleh jawab. Uh, sebab tu dia jawapan, dia tak ada satu cara. You can, tadi jawapan tu diberi uh, dari segi biokimia. Ini diberi macam, sebab tu I said, just because you don't you don't do biology, but you still remember from your school time, even though you don't like your ad math teacher, that's helpful. That's helpful. Ada korang suka ad math teacher? Tak, ad math teacher tu orang suka. Ad math tu orang. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, okay. So um, that's that's the story. And when you look at here, this is what we call as the biphasic curve. I, I should have mentioned it. I forgot. So A ops adalah observation for assimilation. Rubisco dot dot is the calculated by using modeling. What is the expected? Um, reading for for the observation and then REBP generation is the limitation imposed by the Kelvin cycle and TPU is the trias phosphate utilization. Let, let's put it this way and this BC this is a stomata limitation. Let's put it this way. So you have three modeling line here. Rubisco limitation, REBP limitation and trias phosphate limitation. Your observation is the black dots. You see your black dots falls nicely onto the Rubisco line. Meaning that whatever that you observed versus the calculated by modeling agrees because they overlap. 
meaning that your your rubisco line do not go upper or lower your modeling predicts just well this this is just much of your estimation going to happen for this given co2 concentration when you enter the second line which is this rubp regeneration this line here the the solid line here you you can see that at first the line is under the observation meaning that the modeling here underestimate your plant your plant can actually photosynthesize better but your modeling predict it should be down there it's a bit but after that it's correct it's correct but towards the end your modeling line for the RUBP regeneration overestimate but your plant can no longer do the um, estimation just as good All right so with this um, uh, observation raw plotting and the modeling this is how people do the modeling and refine the equation so that even though you do you have a fewer dots you can predict already whether your plant is going to be limited by rubisco or rubp if your plant is limited by rubisco what can you do give more nitrogen because nitrogen makes protein rubisco is protein it's a type of enzyme if your plant is limited by RUBP regeneration, this 5 carbon sugar, what it needs is ATP. So give your plants more phosphate. Then the RUBP limitation <coughs> can be overcome. Right. And this is how it looks like. And this is what, actually, this is from the Lyco. So we copy, we paste into the curve fitting. We're going to that, learn that later. And then the curve fitting tool will do the job for you All right and you can see actually I, I can make this bigger oops kenapa dia tak main kot nak besar nampak tak besar kalau tengok dia lari oh dia tak ni ni ya kejap just nak besarkan je ah, nak habis dia pun kan takpelah ah, nampak ni eh? So there are many parameters. Vc max. This this is the v is the velocity carboxylation. J is the electron transport rate, and the rd is the dark respiration. There are so many parameters that you can get from this curve fitting tool. So lots of information, right? Right. And finally is these two. Um, this is actually from from my one of my student uh, using rice actually. Uh, you, you can you can you can see that um, the observation versus the curve fitting tool. Red is what? Eh? I think it is a different variety. A for A M B and C O two and B for um, CO2. so this is the rice grown in M B and C O two around four hundred ppm. And the red one is the uh, rice grown in elevated CO2. So you can see that for the ambient CO2, the modeling line using the curve fitting tool kind of doing the good job actually. The observation dots stay close to the prediction line, the modeling line. But when it comes to high uh, plants grown in high CO2 concentration, you can see that much of the time the observation the black dots kind of deviate slightly from the observation sometimes it's overestimate sometimes it's underestimate so meaning to say the contribution here is we tell this to the modeler to refine the equation especially for high grown co2 plants yeah meaning that for high CO grown co2 plant this modeling curve fitting tool actually it can be better right uh, if, if that's you are a modeler right okay ada habis what time all right 12 12 12 12 12 12 50. okay um i think that's all for this session of ecological consideration we can take a break until about two right any question any objection yeah, yeah.
Mm -hmm. Uh, the plant that we really take care and then start research find that uh, that we really take care you got them, they will grow better than those that we ignore. Mm -hmm. So what is the theory behind this? <laughs> Usually you don't only talk. You 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 start to pour in something onto yeah. the plant. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, I I have I have a paper published on that. Uh, how different sound wave um, hertz and decibel impact the rice actually it does yeah so if you if you if you want to see the impact um it you, you see when when we talk the sound actually the sound has various parameter to it decibel hertz frequency these things are actually having impact to the plant so when you are talking to the plant, you see that the plant is growing well. It it has to be the right frequency that the plant is in. So meaning that because I think in, in, in the paper that, that we published, we, we saw that specific about 300 something hertz, the plant is actually doing well. The, the sound quality. Yeah, the sound quality. Yeah. Meaning that yeah, you, you, you hit the right decibel and frequency. The plants will do well because this can be translated into wattage energy. The right energy coming to the plants and the plants have got enzyme molecules, they, the, the traffic becomes merrier. Yeah, rather than takes two hours to reach there, now it only takes 20 minutes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, process mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you you can read the paper actually it's uh, I, i'll publish in patanika that one uh sun wave effect on rice a stomata that uh we showed that sun wave managed to change stomata dimension mm. using mozart music uh okay <laughs> Tak, tak, tak boleh tak, tak boleh guna Yasin nanti orang kata I want to convert the whole UPM <laughs> yeah it's, it's very it's very interesting actually yeah plants plants ni kan uh, I tell you what they, they have many similarity with us just because they do not have ears doesn't mean that they are not listening just because they do not have eyes, that doesn't mean that they do not have vision, they can't see. Every single cell has its own eyes and ears. Every single cell. Macam kita kan, kat, kat telinga, ah, tang ni je tinggal, kalau mata, tang tu je mata. Ini macam, oh, tak nampak dah, tak nampak dah. Pukul tak macam tu. Setiap cell tu, ada pendengaran, ada penglihatan dia. That's why you can say that, oh, uh, cahaya tak cukup. I need to grow taller and slender. Uh, tempat ni macam panas sikit. I need to bend myself toward this. Alright, alright. Because it's sensing. It's it's um, macam manusia ada kelenjar, right? Plants. Plants do not have that. So the whole body is the senses, right? Okay. 